Hello everyone, this is Hiowa here. Uh, today I will be reacting to the version 2.8 Summer Fantasy uh, trailer for Genshin Impact. I'll be reacting to this in English, Japanese and Chinese. Uh, I've decided that this order is probably better since I think most of my viewers are from uh, English speaking countries anyway. Um, but I still wanted to react to the other two languages which I understand so it's another way of me um, being able to compare the different uh, audio dubs. Um, I actually already saw uh, the 2.8s in the uh, Billy Billy Chinese stream um, back in on Saturday. But unfortunately, my reaction was not recorded, nor was it broadcasted. Um, so I basically spoke to myself uh, for the first 40 minutes or so. Anyway, let's get started. Have you ever met someone by the name of Kaedahara Kazuha? He was called away earlier by some people from the Tenryo Commission. They said they had something important to discuss with him. Since the Vision Hunt decree has been repealed, I no longer have any grounds to officially arrest him. Okay, so we've then got again, a new character. I guess something very interesting is That's it. I'm taking this case over. Yeah! So he's when I a Taijutsu user. The first time, it's as if I was transported to a strange dimension. Oh, faithful retainers, this is the blessed paradise that one has been Fischl. searching for. Not seen her for a while now. We shall witness the culmination I'm pretty sure the last time I saw her in a story mission I, was... Either in the wind room, or it was back when we had the uh, meteor that landed in Monster and sent people to sleep. My sincere gratitude to you for inviting me to join you on this trip, Your Highness. Look at me, a genius astrologist forced into a juvenile role-playing game. Lady Magistus, are you embarrassed? Stop calling me that weird name. Lady Magic. What? <laughs> oh, excellent, most excellent. Oh, official? That's enough. So basically, now we get the Summer Isles back. The uh, original islands that was in the summer um, patch with Clee, Jean, and Barbara going on holiday. I've got to admit that the. Um, it could be because it's a trailer and it's not from the live stream. The way that they present the additional information is completely different as well. The challenges and stuff for these islands and these domains for these events. I enjoyed the um, resonating vision where you just collect the conches. But this one is rather than sound, you actually see what happens. So this is quite interesting. The uh, gliding mini games are brought back. Got the ship, all the boat games. I wonder if these are competitive though. There, there seems to be a lot of different routes and routes, and it does seem to um, encourage co op to a degree. Some more battle type challenges, which is always nice. I hope they let us test out new characters. A puzzle game involving gears. D Luke's new skin and Fischl's new skin. Okay, that was the English trailer. Let's move on to the Japanese one. I'll probably better skip the um, the events and then go over them in detail later on. So from this trailer basically it's told us that uh, we're going to have a story event that um, is focused on Kazuha based upon the new information received during the uh, novel, uh, the 
the literary festival that we had with the short novels where we uh, discovered that his ancestors were basically um, blacksmiths who forged swords for the Shogun and I'm assuming that his uh, this new character Hazel would be introduced in the event I wonder if this is a four star um, event uh, sword weapon that we get to keep I mean, it kind of makes sense since uh, the Kazuha banner is also going to be uh, announced at that time. So maybe it's uh, a four-star weapon that is designed for Kazuha, similar to how we had the um, well, uh, we had the bow, for example, for Venti during the Wind Bloom Festival. Was this official's uh, Japanese voice? I was pretty sure she had a different voice out And I see that in this uh, video that Mun is um, using the new skin, not the old skin, where um, it was more full tights. Here it's more stocking with the uh, Zetai Roki, the absolute territory gap between the thigh and the uh, hip. Japanese voice actors do have a uh, a different sense. Okay, since this is basically just going through the events again, I'm just going to skip this. You've met a Woju 是完全陌生的地方。There's <laughs> always a different flow to the dialogue in somebody in different language. It's nice to see Xingyang actually getting um, some attention in these events as well. And here, rather than just having um, the Mondstadt characters, we have a mix of characters from different regions. We have Fischl from uh, Mondstadt, Muna from Mondstadt. We then have Xingyang from Liyue and then Kazuha from Inazuma. So yeah, something to look forward to in the summer. Um, I need to go back and just check Heizo's Japanese voice actor because I wasn't really paying attention to it when it, he was there. So despite having a very rough kind of fighting style, I mean, you don't usually uh, assume um, a person who fights with his fist to have more elegance, especially when he's uh, fighting like that. But he seems to have a Kansai kind of accent, um, so it's like similar to like the Kyoto accent. Uh, so there's a type of elegance to its uh, speech. I do like this part here, for example, where they kind of give him that elegance to his fighting style. So obviously he's a catalyst user, he's the first animal uh, catalyst user. 
But instead of just firing something from his catalyst, they've added a combat element to his uh, fighting style. So he's throwing his fists, he's doing kicks, he's able to charge his attack as well with Animo, and then unleash like a, a one-hit punch. But here, this kick here is what I meant by um, adding a sense of elegance to uh, what could be considered a rough fighting style. Like here where he does that kick, but then rather than him landing on the ground quickly, they allow him to float and hover with the Animo. So it adds this sort of, um, yeah, it just adds a sort of elegance to it. That, that kick at the end is very reminiscent of something like Shaolin Soccer or from any over the top um, kind of uh, sports anime. I wonder if this is his burst. Because he's got this large AoE kind of attack here. So it makes me wonder if this punches his skill. It's a chargeable skill. So, you know how characters have um, press and then hold for their skills? I wonder if that was just his skill. So he's got different levels of his um, uh, skill attack. So we know that this sword is somewhat cursed, it's affecting um, Kazuha, so I wonder if we're going to see Kazuha acting like a villain. So we see a realm that is reminiscent of Fischl's uh, imagination. Then we get some Miyu Inazuma settings as well. And then Mina doing her astrology. It's nice that they brought back the summer islands though, because the people who didn't get to enjoy it in the 1.7 patch, was it 1.7, 1.8? They didn't get to enjoy this, uh, and then obviously the entire map basically disappeared at the end of the event. I do wonder though if this map, uh, for people who haven't played it, would they have access to um, Jean, Barbara and Klee's um, story quests or if they won't have access to that. I mean it would be a shame if they didn't get to enjoy for example seeing Klee uh, go on holiday you know and dragging Jean and Barbara along and then getting to see that little cutscene where they wake up the traveler. It's also nice to see how um, all the other characters that later are brought on and how, what they basically do with their spare time on the island. And the uh, conches themselves, they add a sense of um, lore and mystery to it as well, which I actually enjoyed. So it'd be nice to see if these summer isles are the exact same island, which I kind of think they are, or if they're different. Um, but I guess we'll have to wait for the patch to come in next week, uh, since they're running out running the um, overflowing ley lined event which ends in about five days. So I'm assuming our patch comes in around that time when that ends. It looks really nice though. I wanted to check something there. I wasn't too sure it was just... No, so it's the same everywhere. So here they've changed Muna's uh, design uh, for all of the trailers. They've used the new um, skins. Uh, so for those who don't know, um, I believe on the Chinese server, the default skins for Jean, Muna, um, Rosaria... Who else? There's one more character... But anyway, their original um, skins are gone and they've been replaced with these new skins. For the other people who are playing around the world, we have no access to two skins for these characters. Um, 
Personally, I don't know if Munna's uh, original was more revealing or if the new one is, uh, but I personally prefer the new one because I actually felt that this fits her character more. I especially like the, um, the otaku trope of the Zetai Roiki. So when I say juvenile role-playing game, I mean, if that's, is that a hint that we're going to be playing something similar to like in Borderlands where then they all of a sudden add this uh, D&D element to the game? Um, it would be quite interesting if they do, and I would be quite interested to see how they pull that off. It's also going to be the first time we see uh, official rea um, kind of interact with other characters as well. See how her over the top Chunibyo um, syndrome um, will have on Xinyang and Kazuha. And since we see uh, Dokudo's uh, kind of statue here, it makes me wonder if we're going to have some of the games return, but that doesn't seem to be. Um, that wasn't on the list here. So we have a uh, Summertime Odyssey, as uh, summer comes into its own official receives an important missive and departs with everyone in total to begin another, another marvellous sojourn. This is very similar to how Klee um, basically gets invited to the island. I mean, she receives a letter basically threatening that if she didn't come, uh, her dogado, her best friend, would be taken away from her. So we have initial explorations, we've got the conches that were collectible, or these uh, event currencies with the event shop. I think it's the event shop because there's a crown here at the bottom, and this is usually... Oh, do we get a free fish oil? Or is that... Oh no, that's a free skin maybe? A free skin? No, no, that's a free fish oil, and we get a free skin for collecting the conches. So this is similar to Barbara skin. We had to collect all the conches, then we unlocked the Barbara skin. But I think for this event it's actually more generous because we didn't get a free Barbara in the uh, summer event. We had Klee's banner rerun, but we didn't get a free Barbara. Here we're getting official and her skin. So I would recommend people who have um, who don't have Barbara get Barbara for free. And at the same time, you can get her skin for free, which is something that uh, I would recommend because if you don't, the skin goes onto the shop after the event ends and it's charged at full price. Whereas um, during the event, the five star skin, which is the loop skin, we, they'll have it like a 20% discount, but you'll need the, um, the actual currency you pay for to buy it. You can't just use Primo Gems. It would be great if they did, it'll give uh, players more options. But unfortunately, that's just what it is right now. So, Reminiscent Regime is basically just an event to collect uh, talent materials and Prima Gems. So, I think this is Border 1 where we've got all of the different type of events. So, here we've got the um, gliding, the ship missions, and then I guess this is the, um, the floating mission where you're floating on like a, a piece of ice. And you have to defend it and get it through. The gliding missions are always fun. The boat missions, are, they're, all, they're also fun as well, but I don't think they're that challenging. It'd be nice to see if um, there is co-op. I believe there is, because here we saw... Yeah, there's another character, the Traveller. And the boat mission seems to be, um, rather than just staying in the boat, there's other elements where you need to fly onto platforms and take out enemies. So, and there's another boat in front of here, so that probably does mean there's some sort of co-op element. Uh, and then the last part is this floating, um, this flotilla kind of thing. So for anyone who has Ganyu, I reckon you could just probably just stay on this and just shoot everyone from, from range. Uh, that, that's at least what I'm planning to do. And then here we've got uh, a hidden strife during spontaneous visits to Dawn Warren on summer day. The notice sign from the past that might pose a free. So we're actually, this might not be part of it then. It says Dawn Winery, so. 
And I always look forward to these new puzzles that they add. Um, obviously they had the uh, hide and seek, which I enjoyed. And then they had the um, the mechanical theater thing, the mechanics theater thing, where you it's basically like a tower defense. That was also enjoyable, though it got harder as they released um, the other versions. I've got to admit though, Diluc's um, skin is a lot more detailed than I would have originally thought compared to Jean and um, Kirchin's skin. I, I reckon he's gotten a lot more detail. I do like the fact that these skins don't keep the original hairstyles, they kind of give them a change. Here his, his ponytail is a lot higher up, which is um, giving me Kenshin vibes, if anyone's seen um, uh, the Samurai X uh, OVAs where he has this ponytail much higher than he does in the anime TV series where it's much lower. Um, yeah, and it obviously reminds me of Honkai Impact. The um, There's a female character who's a redhead who, and he kind of brings me that kind of vibe, especially with his weapon in front of him like that. So his new outfit is called Red Dead of, uh, of Night. They actually do have a video of this, maybe I'll go take a look at it. I'm actually enjoying this visual um, new skin. So it's got this kind of princess vibe with the uh, the puff on the arms. And then I like the fact that now we don't just see her in dark colours, we're getting to see some lighter colours. We've got the white and we've got the lighter blue colours, lighter shades. And I enjoy the fact that rather than having her two um, pigtails, we now have her hair undone and it's down. And now she's got kind of a crown. So I actually do look forward to seeing uh, how this looks like and how it plays. I know there's some videos out there already, which I'll go on to later. And I can't pronounce that. It's Ein Imanachsrum. Someone will have to uh, teach me how to pronounce that. Anyway, uh, let's see if I can get this skin video. That's not what I asked for. Let's see here the outfit teaser in English. Tear that style, United Lantern New Collection. And they're playing green sleeves. <laughs> and this outfit reminds me of different. So they started playing a rendition of uh, the beginning of green sleeves and it just goes into a new theme. Different times. So, is this supposed to be his outfit when he was with the Favonius Knights? Time to ruffle a few feathers. Dawn, break forth! <laughs> Bow before the true majesty of the Princessin. Ah, oh, I was hoping to see her actually attacking her. That's a shame. <laughs> this outfit reminds me. So I wonder if that's supposed to be a... Um, what's the word? Um, the word for when you're basically uh, idle, an idle animation. So I wonder if people who get this skin will get this idle animation where he's just tightening the... Uh, the sleeve. And this outfit reminds me of different times. And I, I can't remember, but is that the Favonius uh, insignia here on his uh, shoulder? So I believe that that was some damage on his back here and there. That, that looks like some sort of scratch or tear. One of this uh, old you. battle uniform then. This leather is. Dawn, break forth. 
the, the, the white really adds a different depth to the shore. Something about having white stockings and then this set heroic on one leg. Uh, very tuny bill as, as always, but it really does add a different kind of um, dimension to her character. And it's an event reward, as I mentioned before, so it's great. A ceremony outfit for the princess. May she who is noble retain her courage, sincerity, and kindness forever, such that no evil shall ever overcome her. The it would be interesting, well I really doubt they would, but it would be interesting if they actually changed Oz as well, at the same time. I also like the jewel that she has, it's like an opal isn't it? Anyway, it's nice that they are adding new skins to the game. It's nice that they give us the free skins as well, because then it means that people don't really miss out as much. Um, Technically, they're still releasing skins for the normal 5-star banner. I do have Diluc. I don't have Jean or Kirchin. That's the reason why I was never ever um, wanting to get their skin. Uh, and even though their skins are nice, I don't feel like I want them either. Um, I would prefer maybe more battle difference. Something that is more uh, centered on battle, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, and that's it. Uh, please join me for the next video uh, or live stream. Um, I'm currently live streaming uh, the Fed Run Zeit, um episodes I'm uh, watching. I uh, hope you'll be able to watch episode 5 and 6 at some point. Anyway, enjoy your day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.